Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 208 we'll take a look at architectural intersections or something called architectural nexus. Uh, the premise of this concept is that architecture does not live alone. It doesn't live in a silo but rather it must be aligned with other facets of the business and technical environment. In this lesson, <clears throat> I want to show you some of those alignments. I want to cover all of these and really just show you the necessity of where that alignment needs to be. And as a matter of fact, that very first alignment occurs between the intersection of architecture and implementation. And what I'm really talking about here is all the work a software architect does to draw lines and boxes and create a logical and also a physical architecture. And the question is, is the development team following that architecture? Is the development team implementing the components and the subdomains and the domains correctly? And so this intersection is critical for ensuring that the implementation of the architecture is aligned and matches that structure that we define within architecture. <clears throat> now closely related to the implementation is the intersection of architecture and infrastructure. We create an architecture that's built to scale, that's built for elasticity or responsiveness. And we align the implementation accordingly to those kind of capabilities and characteristics. But does the infrastructure support that level of scalability, elasticity, and responsiveness? Uh, where and how we deploy our software and the actual size of virtual machines or pods can influence any of those operational characteristics. And so we try to keep these also in alignment, uh, specifically through fitness functions, which we can use for all of these. Now, the third alignment has to do with data <clears throat> and the intersection of architecture and data topologies. When I say data topology, what I'm really referring to here are three basic kinds of topologies. First is monolithic data topologies. The second is where we partition physically that data into domains with a domain-based topology. And then the third is very typical of microservices where we have a database per service kind of pattern or a topology that's called dedicated where we dedicate databases specifically to each service. Well, it turns out each of those types of topologies has pluses and minuses, strengths and weaknesses, trade-offs, as do the architectural styles. And making sure that these two are aligned is critical for architecture to work. The fourth has to really do with process. And that's the intersection of architecture and engineering practices. How we build our software. How teams are able to implement our software. And this has to do with alignment of those practices and procedures that we use. Our effectiveness of our CI CD pipelines, for example, or maybe practices or procedures that, well, disrupt things like maintainability, testability, deployability, which is overall agility. So we can create an architectural style and an architecture that's highly agile. But if the engineering practices don't align to those, we'll never come close to being agile. Now, related to the engineering practices is another intersection that's necessary for architecture to work. And that's the intersection of architecture and team topologies. Things like either domain or technically partitioned teams, or even diving into the detailed team topologies like streamlined teams or complex subsystem teams, platform teams. Now, making sure we're aligned with the architectural style and the type of architecture that we're implementing versus the way the teams are structured can either be a great match or an oil and water mixture. A simple example are 
partitioned architectures. For example, a domain partitioned architecture, let's take a modular monolith as a great example. But if our teams are technically partitioned, where we have groups of UI developers, groups of business developers, uh, groups of database developers, um, this is a misalignment. And when teams will find that they will struggle to implement features. And so this is an alignment that we can measure through the amount of communication different teams have, the number of tickets required in order to implement a feature, and even my personal favorite, which is measuring merge conflicts between teams. Another intersection, which is critical for making architecture to work, is that of architecture and systems integration, kind of coming back to the main initial premise. Architecture does not live alone. Uh, we need to maybe query or interact with other systems, other third-party services or other third-party systems. And we have contracts to worry about. We have communication dependencies that will impact our capabilities of our system based on those other systems. This is a fairly critical intersection. We've got three more intersections here. The next is the intersection of architecture and the business environment. And when I say business environment, uh, is your business undergoing extreme cost-cutting measures to try to survive? Or is your business under aggressive expansion and acquisition mode? Is it a small business, large business? Is it a complex domain? All of these kind of factors will influence our software architecture, including things uh, like the rate of change of the business, and the rate of change of different functionality within the business. All of these are involved with this intersection and basically keeping this architecture aligned with that specific business environment. Well, we can't forget the largest one, which is the intersection of architecture and the enterprise. Are there certain practices and procedures across your department, division, or entire enterprise that this architecture needs to conform to? Are there certain security requirements, certain libraries that we're allowed to use, required to use, or not supposed to use? Um, enter into here this alignment of an exciting field called SBOM, and this is the Software Bill of Materials. Um, these are tools uh, that allow you during a release and to be able to find out what is actually included in this software. We can measure that against allowed or restricted or required libraries that we must have within that system uh, to ensure alignment with uh, that enterprise. Well, I saved perhaps the best one for last, but in this new field of AI, we do have the intersection of architecture and generative AI. When we look at the overall AI or generative AI ecosystem, it influences our architectures, specifically through categories, uh, through tools and techniques of like guardrails or evals, and also the alignment of architecture in terms of AI-driven architecture. Some really kind of exciting, neat stuff. Well, you can learn more about uh, these kind of intersections through a couple of places. Um, the second edition of our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, includes a new chapter, chapter 26, uh, that gives you an introduction and describes in a little bit more detail each of these architectural intersections. Again, what we call architectural nexus, uh, uh, which is plural of nexus, which nexus means intersections. Um, but Neil Ford and I also have classes about architecture is code and architectural intersections. And you can keep up to date with those by going to my upcoming events page on my website. Uh, we're also, as of the recording of this lesson, currently working on a book, our third book about uh, this intersection and architecture as code. Uh, so this has been lesson 208, architectural intersections and just the demonstration and knowledge and introduction that architecture in order to work, can't live alone, but has to be aligned with all nine of these areas.
So thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned next month for a next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.